second one and I was like oh yes like how fun let me just go ahead and film the process video for you all so I have the templates right here and I also don't have any cool lighting in the back because this is raw and real this is how my art studio be looking right now it's literally my bedroom Maybe 
before with sewing videos. This is my first like process video, I guess. Like one of my first few. Alright, clip it again so it doesn't move. And then our last little section right here. So the cool thing about these templates is that there's actually sizing guides on them. Small, medium, large, but I cut the large section off because I'm not going to be using it. So you can measure your head with that like soft measuring tape, the like flexible one, you know. And yeah, so there is one piece of the fabric cut out. I'm just going to go ahead and cut the other pieces because it's really just the same thing and then I'll come right back. All right, you guys, I am back. So now I have the circle, the top piece of the hat. I have the sides of the hat. Let's see, let's see, organize them. And then I have the little brim pieces as well. So it looks a little bit overwhelming at first, but it's definitely not that hard. So what you're going to do is, the first thing I like to do is take the little skinny brim pieces. Let's clear the way a bit. And I like to look at the fabric for a second and decide which side I want to be the front or like the top, the side that you're going to be seeing or the good side, whatever you want to say. And then what the bad side or the inside of the hat is going to be. So just take a look at your fabric and maybe feel it. See what might be more comfortable on the inside of the hat versus the outside. Or like if you just like the way the fabric looks better on one side than the other. So on this hat, the one that I had already made, um, some of the outside is more like textured a bit. If you can tell, it looks like a poodle fur, like Sherpa-y type material. And then there's some pieces that are like a little bit smoother. I don't know if you can tell. Um, so I'm just like trying to decide in live time with you all. I think this is going to be the inside and then this will be the outside. So you're going to have the good side up and then look at your other piece of fabric and decide the same thing. Okay, I think this is gonna be my good side. So now I'm just going to place them on top of each other and I'm going to pin both of the ends together to prepare for sewing them. So I just like to take two clips and these pieces I actually cut a little bit imperfect so I'm gonna have to um, trim them up a little bit so that they match a little bit better but for now it's okay then I'm gonna put the clips on the other side so basically if you're gonna do a patchwork which is this one there's a couple more pieces that are individual so really what it would look like is you're gonna have these like folded halves and you're just gonna like sew the ends together. Um, I know that doesn't really make sense, but this is pretty much like the big version of it. So we'll just keep it easy here. So basically whenever you're gonna like sew the ends together and then you flip it, like this is your hat, you know what I'm saying? So there's that. And then just do the exact same thing with the other pieces. Decide the same stuff. Take a look, take a look. This side looks better to me than this side. So that's going to be the bad side. So we're going to do the good side up. And then let's look at this one. Let's see, let's see. And then I'm going to do this side right here down. So that's the good sides facing each other. Yeah, I did kind of cut these pieces a little wonky, but it'll be all right. Line them up. Go ahead and pin them, clip them, clip them. You could use sewing pins. They're cheaper. But I personally don't recommend it because this kind of keeps it a little bit more secure and it doesn't shift around the fabric much at all, which is really nice. So there is that step. And now we are going to head over to the sewing machine and just sew a little line right along these edges, 
probably just about like this much of an inseam and then I'll show you guys how to like fit it to your head and stuff like that. So let's head over to the sewing machine. Hey guys, this is going to be a really weird angle and like kind of difficult to do because the mic is over here. But what we're going to do is we're going to take off our clips and we're going to place it under the machine. And we're just going to put the presser foot down. Okay. And then we're going to start stitching a regular straight stitch, which is like the little dotted line, just a you know, typical stitch. And leave like a little, like less than an inch, like three eighths inch, four eighths, just kind of just see, do it intuitively.
start to make the hat, that's not going to work. Um, you need to kind of like release some of that stuff that you did. So you're going to like, all right, I'm going to try to explain the best I can. So there's one sewing line, two sewing lines, and three sewing lines. So the third one is the closest one on the inside. And this is the stitch that's going to be like the main stitch that holds this hat together. So these are kind of like, they're not really serving a purpose. So we're just going to cut them off. But you're going to want to leave at least like a, like three eighths seam allowance. So just cut like right on the other side of where that, that last line is. But make sure not to cut the actual structural piece. So then whenever you flip it inside out and you pull it, it's like secure, you know? So there is that, just because all that other stuff is not necessary, it's just bulk, essentially, and it's gonna make your hat like sit weird on your head, so you don't want that. So just cut, 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 cut. trim all your lines and do the same thing on the other side. Honestly, use whatever thread color you want, but I either like to do one that's contrasting with the hat or, you know, something like that. So now what I'm going to do is I'm actually just going to trim this piece because I said it was a little bit uneven. Um, I accidentally cut one a little bit shorter than the other just because the way that I was like laying my fabric down for the video, it wasn't like as precise as it normally would be. I feel like I'm not able to concentrate as much since I'm like filming the process too, but it's okay. So now it's ready to be put together. So I'm actually going to bring the camera back down around and show you guys that process. Okay, you guys, so for this next step, you're gonna wanna get your clips again. Okay, and we're going to put our pieces together. So I like to take the base brim piece and we are going to uh, flip it. Okay, let me think of how to explain this. <laughs> so you're going to focus and concentrate on the seam that you created, okay? And you're going to have two seams. So take one seam and you're going to line it up with this seam. And actually what we're going to do is, where'd my scissors go? We're going to trim this big piece because that's way too much excess because how it's going to sit is like all of that is just like flapping around. So we're just going to trim it down a little bit more so it's more manageable. And then we're going to put our pieces together. Because another thing is like your sewing machine can't handle like a crap ton of bulk, especially if it's not an industrial machine. So you're just trying to like extend the life of your machine and, you know, save needles from breaking and stuff like that. So you are going to take the seam of the base of the hat, the little brim, and then this other piece, and you're going to line them up together. And you are going to be looking at the raw edges. I know it's really hard. I used a horrible color for a tutorial, but you're going to see these flap pieces on the outside, not the inside. So just make sure you try your best to line those up. And it depends on like if you're doing a pattern and like everything like that, there's like more to worry about. Um, with a solid color like this, it's not going to be as easy to tell, but whenever you're working with a hat like this, that needs to be lined up like pretty perfect, you know, um, just so it doesn't look like cheap and janky. <laughs> so I like to line these up and then put a clip on that seam and then you're just going to go around the rest of the hat. You see the two pieces and you're just going to like kind of pinch it as you go and start putting clips all around and that's why these clips in particular are so important compared to the pins because it's a way 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 faster process this way for sure and it keeps it more solid 
so then now you're running into your two seams again so if you did your end seams on both of those pieces that we did together on the ends if you did that like just kind of like as you go it might not be as perfect but if you're doing like mathematically or you have a good eye for like balance and things like that it should about line up so mine almost line up perfectly so you're just gonna do that overlap them and a tip that I have, I'm so sorry you can't see like at all, but you're gonna wanna like flatten the flaps. You see that right there? Kind of flatten the flaps on either side because whenever we sew them down, that's gonna like eliminate the bulk. So just a little, little tip to make your life a little bit easier. It's easier to sew that way. All right, and then you're just gonna keep going around and around until you're done. And then after we do this, we're going to take it back to the sewing machine. And then I'll show you what to do next. I mean, essentially, you're just going to sew it together, but I do have a little couple tips here and there. So sometimes you might have like a little too much fabric going on. Um, mine is not too, too bad, but something you can do is just like kind of stretch it out. Can you see that? How it's like a little bit but stretch it out and make it like flat and skinny and then just kind of like pinch it and pull it until it kind of fits really good but if you have a super huge gap you might need to go back and fix your inseams so that there's a little bit less fabric going on so and you can also use multiple clips a little bit closer together to like kind of you know perfect your work a little bit so then whenever you flip it inside out you have the structure of your hat pretty much ready to go. So let's head on back to the sewing machine and get into it. Okay, you guys, so the first tip that I have here is that you're gonna wanna take off this little extension on your machine. So that we can lay the flaps flat. There we go. 
So this was like one of our second stitches that we did. I did it a little bit too close and I didn't cut it all the way. So, okay, there we go. So now that it's open, we're going to lay it flat again. Y'all, this is some real shit. I'm not editing this. <laughs> all right, so lay the flaps flat and make sure. So now we're ready to 
this is one of the hardest parts for me. It's the part that I've messed up um, probably the most. So go ahead and look at your circle one more time and decide which side is going to be the inside and which side is going to be the outside. Um, so just take a look at it and decide. Keep the fluffy. I think I'm just going to go ahead and keep everything fluffy on the outside instead of a smooth piece. So um, again, flip it inside out if you just checked. And then you're going to put the um, piece that you want facing the outside down, okay? And you're going to start pinching. I like to start um, at the little seams where we sewed it together and just put the circle on there. And what ends up happening usually is that the circle is a little bit bigger than you might um, need it. So just try your best to line everything up with this circle. Uh, because essentially it's kind of like a bunch of rectangle, rectangular shapes that you made. So to add a circle to the equation might seem a little difficult at first, but just keep trying your best and pinching it as you go, just like the other steps. And then I'll tell you guys what to do whenever you start running into problems with like the sizing of it and everything. So, because the circle usually is way bigger than you need it to be. So keep going around. But hey, it's always different. Sometimes, you know, you don't run into that many problems. Okay, yeah, see? So the circle, the end of this starts here. And then the circle is all the way up here. So we have about one inch of, like, technically too much fabric. So again, just keep trying to do that, like, pinching and pulling technique. But what you don't want to happen is have it, like, bunched over. So where it's kind of like a pinch. Because it's like, you'll sew over that and then you'll see that texture. So I think it's better to just go ahead and let there be too much fabric over there and then just clip it down. Um, so that is that. Uh, we actually didn't end up running into quite as many issues as I thought. So now we're going to head back over to the sewing machine and finish this guy up. Okay, so another tip here is that you're going to want now the brim piece to be facing this way machine and you're going to want the circle piece to be under the presser foot. So we're just going to start on any section we're feeling like. Probably not the part where the big gap is. I find that's a little bit more difficult but you're just going to go ahead and get prepared. Now this is important because Circle, like if you sew the circle down too far, you might end up making it too shallow. 
holes because I felt like I might have accidentally done that, you know? So just go ahead and feel all the way around and make sure you don't have any breakthrough where there's a hole, you know? Because sometimes it happens, and if so, it's okay. So now we're going to do our final little try-on to make sure that we like the depth of the hat.
my finger and wipe it off. I find that's the fastest thing to do. So you're going to pick the side of the fabric you want to use. I recommend using the side that is more smooth in nature. And then let me check my other hat for reference to see. You're going to want to leave a little bit of space on either side so that it doesn't look too crowded or anything like that. So just go ahead and start and make sure you press fairly hard, especially if it's a darker fabric because there's not much room for it to be transparent, you know. She's got a hold on me. So basically with all these hats that I make, I like to name them now and make them special. And that's why I like to do these little stamped tags because I haven't seen anything like this out there in the world. So just, you know, take your time, make sure you're lining things up how you want. My phone's on 10. Great. <laughs> okay. Wipe these corners. And sometimes the hats, I'll like think of the color scheme first and then I'll make it like, oh, I want to make a brown and tan color blocked hat. Sometimes I'll just see a fabric and go, oh, I want to make a hat with that. Or I'll think of like the name after the fact and then it becomes more meaningful like over time, you know. So here is what we've got so far. Let me turn the brightness up a bit. There you go. She's. So I'm going to finish stamping that and then we'll sew it on and then the hat will be done. Now we have our quote. She's got a hold on me. Done. So the next step is you're going to actually need these pins. I said you didn't need them, but I lied. If you have them on hand, fantastic. If not, just, I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> so now I'm going to try on this hat. Look at these sexy bangs. Um, and I'm going to decide what the front is going to be. So you guys are going to do the same if you're at home making hats with me. So I really do like that you can see the bunnies on this hat. On this other hat that I made for Lexi, you can't see the bunnies as much. They're more cut off in the front. Uh, so I kind of do like this aspect of it, but you can flip to the other side too and just like double check and make sure. Or sometimes like you'll try on a hat and see like that doesn't look good. So it's the back, you know what I mean? So take the good side that you're obsessed with, you love, and you're going to make sure you're being conscientious of the seams on each side to locate the middle to place the little tag on. So I'm going to lay the hat flat. There, there keeps being like a little bit of a sound. I hope you guys don't mind. This um, cube is doing some weird stuff. So uh, let me clear my workstation. Y'all, we're reaching the home stretch. So I'm laying her flat and I'm determining the middle of the hat. So I'm just going to line up this little guy right where it needs to go. I think it's sometimes helpful to keep your hand in there just so you can like prop the hat up a bit and see what it's going to look like. And then what you're going to do, I notice that if you do a tag on your hats or anything, if you're into this kind of style like I do, I like to put my tag a little bit closer to the brim down there. I think it looks better on. So now what you do is you take your little clips, or what do you call these? Sewing pins. And you're going to make sure that it is secure and ready for sewing. And also just make sure it's straight because nothing would be worse than it looking wonky and wackadoodle do, right? Little crazy. So just make sure that is straight. And then, now we are going to try it on. This is the full process, guys, for real. You're going to try it on. You don't want to just go ahead and take that to the sewing machine. You're going to try it on and make sure you like the placement. 
so it depends like how you're gonna wear it this looks like it's up too high now so now that I've you know pinned it on it's okay I'm gonna take it off and I'm gonna shift it a little bit even closer to this line or another solution would be to take the brim and sew it so that there's less fabric on the brim so it's more balanced and doesn't look as like weird and like top hat heavy so I'm gonna do that and then we're gonna sew okay guys home stretch thank you so much for watching by the way all right so the only thing we're changing now when it comes to the sewing machine is we're gonna switch the stitch to the zigzag stitch okay so uh that is what we're gonna do now with this you're gonna want to put the brim now inside towards the machine because we need room to be able to do it so this is similar to like how you would do a sleeve like for real this time so um, with this, just be sure to avoid sewing directly onto the, uh, pin. You don't want to do that, so we're going to go ahead and take that off. Make sure that it's straight and where we want it to go. Another tip is there's going to be a little bit of a seam right here where you attached these two pieces together, the brim and kind of like the head part, you know? So you're going to want to move that out of the way just so it doesn't have excess bulk. So we're going to put the presser foot down and go ahead and start sewing. Now we're going to want to, um, what am I trying to say? Uh, make sure that it's uh, secure. Hello. <laughs> so you're going to do your typical like back stitch.
And so these little craft projects, once you kind of get a hang of it, it's only going to take like less than an hour to do it start to finish. I feel like it took way longer because I was filming it, but this is the hat. And now my girl Alexi and I can match. How exciting. And like, I love that every single one is different. So, so freaking cute. I love this. I can't just keep everything. You know what I mean? So I have to give one away. <laughs> All right. So thank you guys so, so much for watching. If you made it to the end, amazing. If you didn't, it's okay. <laughs> so yeah. I love you all so much. If you'd like to see more sewing content or sew with me type of videos, let me know. I would love to do that for you all. And I will talk 